So the next question we have is, what are ways to repair breakages to the costumes on set so that they are difficult to detect? I just lost the first part of the question because it was breaking what? So the, they were asking about the repairs that you had to make on set. And so how did you how did you accomplish that without it being visible? That's another good question. Really, because it goes to the point of, I believe a lot of, a lot of your um, questions come from people who actually has to mm-hmm. look after that. So they're not, it, it, it caught, <laughs> yes. that caught, caught us a bit out of surprise. All the work has been done to make these indestructible, how actually destructible they could be and how actually uh, ruin and damage they could be. We did a lot of stress tests and all this was good, but then when the real fight happened, it was a real, almost a real fight. It was a proper fight. These were just literally, you know, crash on the floor from out of those. So we had a lot of things that were breaking. And we kind of soon learned what are where the pieces then they needed to be more than repaired, replaced around the knees and the sides. You know. Now, luckily, unknowingly, we made a lot of that. There were like loads of areas that can be taken apart and put it back. Not all of them but we're made about different pieces. So we could actually learn that even if they were like attached and glued together, we could have, you know, just replaced this section of it. So we made sections, even if they were not really mean to be sections, but whatever the design would allow. So we start thinking, all right, if this thing's gonna get broken, let's make another piece like that. So we're gonna replace that. Where possible, we mostly replaced units of areas that we knew they were gonna be stressed more than others. Now, a chest part or a leg, it, it was rare to be broken. You know, it was really rare to break a big piece. So we didn't have that issue. But sometimes, like around the legs, especially the inside or the outside, if you had a really big hit, they would break. So there were like a, a team on set looking after the armor, like, you know, people with screws and, you know, like uh, they, they had, they used anything, also tape sometimes, and they painted temporarily you know i'm yeah. saying the easiest things you can do with like with a clicking time for the camera waiting for you but to shoot make a bit of tape and paint it something and a bit of like you know anything just for that specific shot and then as soon as they had time they called the guy apart replace the leg part put it back on right if it's like on set repairing they had any they learn anything possible starting from the american tape you know the strongest things and just you paint and then you go on or as we said sections and units then we knew there could have been damage if you could think ahead. And then if you can't, because it wasn't expected, then anything possible. And a bit, of time, especially in the, towards the latest episodes, when at some point they get really dirty and muddy, and then there's like a lot of dirt. On, on one hand, it was easier. On the other hand, then it was like a matching oh, constantly yeah. the amount. No. It was a, that was a nightmare. Just for sake of continuity. Really yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, and there's no. somebody taking notes for that the whole time. <laughs> I don't know what it did. I think they're trying to do as much as possible until they fi- they figured out it was pointless. So <laughs> it, you know, you know, and then it becomes instinct. It becomes oh, I think it was about that. All right, let's do this way. What was the most common piece that was replaced? Knees. Knees. Knees okay. was like, a, like was an issue. The flipping part, because then you, you know it was already flippy before, you know, because it can be one piece. So the one thing flip over the other one. Right. And that part, sometimes you get stuck. And it's <laughs> so, <tip off. laughs> Yeah, that was constantly broken. We did like hundreds of those ones replacements. <laughs> we have another question about damage. Apparently one of our members has seen this video where Kai is tripping and falling pretty hard in her armor. On the earth. Focus, focus, Dan, focus, Dan. Okay, um what was there major repairs after that little yes she did really fall yeah yeah well she fell on her face or something but it was she was well covered so yes yeah a lot of things would just leave this mantle like you know and then screw back (laughs) yeah she did and she wasn't repaired neither i remember that yeah yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure it was in slow motion and everyone went ah. yeah. <laughs> it was beautiful it was kept yeah yeah it falls it would fall 
Yeah. Was there any difference in the shoes for the uh, stunt workers and the main hero actors? Yeah, there were some really running, like a sneaker, like a running shoes for the stunt. Okay. They were like made, you know, the top was the same, but the bottom was a lot thinner. Yeah, which should make it really awkward. Three-inch extra platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost nothing. Yeah. Like all the proportion. That was very interesting. If you would change one centimeter, and I say a centimeter because it's a smaller unit, mm -hmm. on the shoulder, on the legs, on the arm, the whole proportion would look very awkward. So it really needed, the Spartan armor needed to have it all. Sometimes yeah. we, need, we needed the shoulder a lot bigger because we had a huge head all of a sudden. Put the helmet on and the head was huge. Mm -hmm. And the shoulder was too little. And it was... It's not going to make anybody scared. So we needed to add this muscle suit. For example, all of a sudden, the, even if these guys and girls had beautiful big legs, they were tiny compared with the, with the head. So they were never going to be enough. So you, they're like, really, like, you look like in walking on sticks. Mm -hmm. Even if they had muscles, Jesus, what would it be if I'd wear that, right? Mm -hmm. So we needed to add a lot of muscles and caps to proportion with big, you know, the, with, the, with the big, feet thing otherwise look so we needed to go around and again we need to put more here there's not enough we need to do that more and the muscles and the suit they were wearing the under armor mm -hmm. was pressing the muscle to become smaller so making it bigger making a different material than last so it literally were constantly you know the arms all of a sudden the biceps it was too mm -hmm. tiny let's do more so it was a cost of rechanging to have and they became massive because of that. More than mm -hmm. very, very tall. They were tall, but like they were like big in a proportion of a human. Yeah. The way they would walk, that's another thing we need to facilitate. Yeah. It's not even just the action, right? The action on its own is somehow easier because it's fast. But the walking, if your legs, you can't put them too close and they're too far. It makes everything but, uh, intimidating. So did you have different undersuits, one that's used with the armor and then your, your screenshot, like, like, a standalone undersuit that has all the detail yeah. like where there were two separate okay uh, basic it basically was the same under armor mm -hmm. the only thing we avoided is was to put some volume like you know the chest part from, and the breast part for women something it would have interfered with the fitting of the armor so mm -hmm. it was the same basically we avoided to put some because the under armor was made of basically three pieces the top the bottom and the vest it was a vest. Okay. It was like all this sculptured body thing. Yeah, yeah. So part of the vest for the women, the breast, and for men, you know, the chest muscle thing were avoided to use. In fact, you'll see on an Instagram of some of the stand versions with like they'll be missing from there. I would never yeah. thought they were gonna put those pictures, but anyway. <laughs> they, they were, You're they were, like, no. Okay. Jesus, that was just why do you want to do that? But anyway. Um, we want so to see that. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Again, we're over here taking notes. Did. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's gold for us. <laughs> and I would never thought that the yeah. Agnes part, I've been hiding all these things the whole life. So then I'm saying you guys like the most. But anyway, that <laughs> part, it's, it tells you the story. I mean, if they help, for example, the shoulder part, mm -hmm. the hard part would help to hook the, you know, the armor. So that was kept. Yeah. We basically made the whole thing, like taking some parts off, where there was a problem with the armor on his own. It was very modular. Mm -hmm. How how did you guys manage breathing and temperature control and not them sweating to death or or getting like overheated with wearing a helmet? Because it is it is pretty close to their faces. We didn't manage. <laughs> we didn't. Manage. They just suffered. We collect a lot of complaints. Which, once again, I told them, the only thing I, I think I did and it worked straight away, I said, there are problems, they're not going to be solved because mm -hmm. it's not, it's against uh, physics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But by trying our best, so to answer your question, for example, we had fun, little fun placed mm -hmm. so inside and there was like a remote remote control from a person on set that was like, you know, turn on and off or you know, giving a bit of more speed up to if there was interfering sound, for example, mm -hmm. if there was a voice, so they need to turn it off. If there was not lines, they could have just go all the way. And that will produce a ventilation into it. But the, um, what we, and also a bit of like, you know, uh, cooling. There was mm -hmm. a cooling system as well, of course. Oh, that's but cool. what, what we couldn't have control over is how much a body sweat. You can sweat even by standing because you're tense. 
just existing. So now. that would have needed a different, like a therapist, let's say, and we did not die in the budget. So we did not, have, <laughs> although we should have it in any case. Yeah. <laughs> but that was the thing. There was one of them that was sweating, like it was sweating by looking at him. And there was a girl <laughs> who could have, you know, threw herself down the hill. She was not, you know, not even. Yeah, she was fine. So that was something we didn't have control over. But mm-hmm. fair enough, they were full and they, no, the, in the under armor and especially around the face, they also had something. They would wear a balaclava. Mm-hmm. Balaclava, yeah. yeah. We'd be purposely made to make sure the neck would never show because skin was not, yeah. such, not allowed to show. It was, you know, the thing that... But the sealed suit. Yeah, sealed for... For several sealed. reasons, it was not a good idea to, you know, it was their weak part. And so they were mm-hmm. COVID everywhere. So also wearing that on his own without even the helmet that made him sweat by having a balaclava on their head in the summer. Although they liked it in the winter very much. (laughs) With the approaching of the heat was really, and moving in there. So all of a sudden, and the the muscle suit was terrible because the muscle can be a breathable thing. So it was like really making them. So they just uh, understood that was the deal and they dealt Mm -hmm. with that. But in scenes when you need to run and have a, you know, need to see what you're doing, sometimes, especially stunts, requested to have a removable uh, visor because we removed it on set sometimes. Otherwise, yeah, it came yeah. out for safety, you can wear. But yeah. we also had we had some clear ones. So for you know CGI thing purposes, mm-hmm. you could still see on the white one, uh, you know, reflections. The oh. CGI needed that reference. Otherwise, it would be a mess to recreate. Mm-hmm. So sometimes they use that clear one so they could see better than the colored one. And there were now all the interfering part of the nets, you know, what the 3D print has told you. So they use the clear one sometimes for CGI purposes, and they could do a bit more than uh, being without. But as I said, you can solve one issue, but you can't solve how much the body is mm-hmm. producing. There. You can't it's control that part. part, yeah. We had the cooling suit, you know, for the body mm-hmm. here. And they used it a little bit. And it was more, uh, it helped more, I think, psychologically mm-hmm. than, because the amount of heat you produce, yeah. uh, it could constantly be attached to a plug, which it was not that easy either. Yeah. What were some of your biggest challenges for designing and working on these costumes that you had to overcome? And what one of the challenges that stood out to you the most? Being prepared of doing the Spartan armor, it was it was a challenge, but an expected challenge. The challenge then challenged me the most was the one I did not expect. Uh, so I'd say Maquis, this in-between world was very um, a challenge then. I knew it was going to be where I was trying not to yeah, see how I could get away with that. Maquis was a big challenge. So there was in-between worlds that were really complicated to to hook, to find the idea, what I'm going to pull that from, you know? So that could have been a thing that I didn't expect. Whether the armor were a custom, the armors were a custom challenge, but mm-hmm. on on the a known ground. You had a direction, yeah. No, the, you know, we need to solve these, and that's the desk, and my problem is going to be here, you know, this rectangle. But whether my key was like, for example, it could have been anything. What is it? Air, fire, you know, you don't know really where to go grab it. What's mm-hmm. the reference? You can have a million references, but on which world? Trying materials first. What material would give me the feeling more than the shape on his own? What material would be, you know, not too classic, too old, too, mm-hmm. too advanced, too sci-fi? So what material would give the results? And to then find out the material on his own that was not uh, giving me the answer. So I started to build texture, and the texture could be you know, any ancient writing, hieroglyphic thing, anything I needed to have a material and the, and the contrast with the, with the texture. And so the combination of the two eventually gave me the, uh, the way out. But that was a bit of thinking. What is the costume that you are most proud of and why you think it stands out from the rest? One can be related to your own travel. You know, once you make something that doesn't exist, even if it's craft, it's a struggle because you have it in mind that needs to come out and you guys do that. So, you know, it's a bit of a struggle because you need to make something that you need to be happy with. Mm-hmm. So the first part is, once can be related to my own creative struggle, 
and one and we talk about my key now you know it's up in the air what i'm going to grab this what degrees i'm going to pull strings to make these an idea to then develop in something that i might going to be happy with so my key is one of that that it became more of a teamwork really properly from my idea down to the costume uh, sorry to the makeup and the hair and the, and the creative mm. uh, became a very complex world then at the end for me worked personally possibly not expected it is uh, this as an answer i liked the all the unsc world although mm-hmm. there were a lot of graphic and things Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it so much. Um, I, wouldn't, I couldn't have done better if I had to do my own design from scratch because that was a, such a beautiful world. Mm-hmm. I only needed to decide the proportion of people, the material, mm-hmm. which was beautiful. But saying that, there was a big range of it. And there was a big range of books in the library and video games. Um, I enjoyed the UNSC world very much at the point that I needed to make some of them working, you know, they were not military people, but working in the mm-hmm. in UNC office. And so I got inspiration from the uniform to make some other uniform, not military mm-hmm. uniform. And Natasha, I have to say, I probably say, uh, Natasha had a very specific idea about her own character, really <laughs> different from whatever UNS people <laughs> three had in mind. She wanted to be any, she did not want to be. She had that as idea of her character. Mm-hmm. Like a, a scientist does not be, be does need to be wearing a uniform. A scientist is a crazy person who just you know, <laughs> can go all around the world and wear hair the other way around. A scientist is anything. Does need to convince and show these as a lot of scientists does. And if you look at Freud or you know, but obviously that was not going to go in the direction of three foot three. Say that so it was like a big meeting with Natasha to be you know to become a doctor Halsey. But once that was happening to find this character. Uh, once she came back from set and she said, I was really focused on Dr. Halsey, you know, obviously it's my character. But I said, the vision you had on the UNSC, it's very special I actually, realized that I really like it. So she enjoyed and she came back with a comment that the UNSC world, she said, there's a vision behind and she really appreciated to see that these people really belonged Mm-hmm. World. So for me, just going into the UNSC world, as, a, as I said, I had a lot of references, but extend that with the same field to other people that did not exist and having everybody approval on that, it made me feel that I was on the right track. And this is a very joyful moment. So it's a challenge that doesn't start as a challenge as making an armor, but is a, a personally, is, I mean, I was making 343 happy. Jesus, where am I going to get that? <laughs> <laughs> I was really happy to work with, for them, you know, to please them. And it's their video game. It's their world. You know, if they see you fit into it in the way they think, you, you know, it's a bigger thing than make a brand new thing. That, so Maki and the UNSC is definitely two big challenges and uh, very different starting with a very different uh, reason, but they end up well from my point of view. How many different Pablos did you have? Did you have like a uh, sculpting Pablo and like a mannequin dressing Pablo that was full size there to test on. Like there's got to be like five or six of these full size recreations um, now. In, in the process of making, you mean like prototyping or yeah, during the yeah. prototyping process. So you had like the mannequin to test parts on and one to sculpt things off of and uh, yeah, well, there were like loads of it, I'd say, because especially into the fact, the making of, the, you know, the factory who made those ones, they had, you know, we had one body print, but they had like a few more. Mm-hmm. Once good thing, because they needed to build this part. And then they had another section because they also make, you know, they use uh, soft materials to make the suits, mm-hmm. you know, they mm-hmm. make all the, uh, you know, uh, other ones. So they need, they, there's one into the, tailoring place to build all the suits and then one in the in the in the 3d side and then they had another one into these sculpture things and then you know they had several pablos <laughs> standing around it was creepy yeah, i just also, was yeah. hoping for the terrifying thought army there's just yeah there's a warehouse <laughs> of pablos somewhere <laughs> it's like west world there's an army of him right and uh what to spend the word in regards of the the ladies 
that it was another surprise how to make the ladies look like ladies when they're in the armor. That was my thing. How do we know that? So mm -hmm. it was obviously we needed a trick about the body shape to make, you know, like lowering the, the belt to make the hips slightly mm -hmm. wider to then make, you know, to make more of a shape of woman. But they were gorgeous. Yeah, those uh, suits were beautiful. Under armor. Yeah. Um, feminine and functional at the same time which uh, in armor is very hard to accomplish without getting weird. Yeah, you can't just go full Red Sonia or something. Like yeah, that. no, none of that. <laughs> <laughs> you knew exactly where I was going. Yeah, it doesn't quite work in the world of Halo. No, no. I wasn't, no I wasn't quite sure that was going to work out okay, making a, uh, you know, a female version of that kind of bulky thing, you know. Mm -hmm. But also the ladies in there, they made their armor look like it, the ladies, you know. It was not all about the design. They are fantastic. I forgot when they were in there for a second. Yeah. They were making it. Bringing it they to life. Stunning, beautiful. Mm -hmm. With their armor, especially, and with their armor, they were really. Um, they yeah, were I, w I want to grow up to be Kate Kennedy in that armor. <laughs> Absolutely. Many gifts came from this shop. Yeah. As I say, it's, it's a universe that I understand why you guys play that thing. Yeah, that, that game, you know, you get attached to it because it's mm -hmm. it's not sci-fi. It, there's a lot. There's more time. vibration into that world, and you can even if this is possibly the, for you know, from whatever I read, the farthest, um, the far from being Halo, wh whatever we we end up creating, it was uh, it get me really attached to it, emotional mm -hmm. thinking about it. No, every time that I watch the series, it's just another. Ah, this is inspiration from book so and so way mm -hmm. back here. So people that say it's not quite Halo, well, uh, they need to read. The take book. a bit of a look because yeah. there is twenty years of history there. Yeah, there's a lot, and and not all of it's congruent, right? Um, so you have you How have a lot of research. versions of Reach yeah. have we seen? Yeah, <laughs> you have a lot of different interp artistic interpretations that you can pull from. Um, and some people will have a, a specific favorite that they're like, this is it, this is the one. I'm like, yeah, it's not necessarily what everyone else sees. So I, I do appreciate that um, the series on its own is a standalone experience that, that you could take somebody who has no idea what any of it is and you can drop them into this and they will get it. They will become attached to the characters and they will appreciate it. And still it pays uh, homage to, to you know the 20 years of history. Okay. Like my coworkers that have no idea what the video game is, but yeah, like, yeah, okay, this I get. I like this. the show. Yeah. Are there a lot of found items utilized in the different costumes and props, or is it primarily uh, custom pieces that you used in your uh, designs? So I think the, this the is talking about the. Um, people of Madrigal and the insurrectionists, or if there's any interesting found items like off the shelf things for the UNSC. There are, um, strangely, the motor vehicle, it's more custom made than some props like a backpack. Mm -hmm. You know, so getting <laughs> off the shelf, there's some, back, some small pieces like a backpack, like one, uh, they were like purchased from props department made to adjust the design of the costumes and some motor vehicles that were you know, almost made brand new. So mm -hmm. Halo has been able to make things that you would never think they can make, like, like literally motor vehicles. Some they're like made up yeah. from scratch and some backpack has been purchased without taking anything off mm -hmm. from the purchase. But um, as I remember the previous conversation, there's some possibly tags or a brand showing has been roughly been sent it. Uh, I was not always happy with purchase because I don't think Hello is or franchise mm -hmm. would want to use things. Um, but I understood that uh, it was a difficult production and on certain levels in certain departments, uh, some last minute changes and uh, made. Um, but I think ultimately everything worked, but there are things that be purchased and especially in the prop. I mean, we're not talking about specific uh, weapons that can be purchased. Yeah, I'm not but, sure if this is a person that's just hoping to like find something as a base to build off of. If someone saw if someone saw something, then it's recognizable. Then, congratulations to that person. A, 
<laughs> and it's been disguised, and that's actually a good, uh, good spot. And yes, we did use something. It's been used over production, some uh, existing material, where necessary. For me, it was always a necessary, but say, yeah. where necessary. Methods of saving time while working on gosh knows how many different pieces. For, you know, for reasonable reasons. Yeah. Uh, for a pr production perspective, not necessarily for viewers' perspective. perspective. Yeah, since you had mentioned that it was four years of production, especially for this series in general. A lot of, people, a lot of crew has changed uh, during yeah. that process, you know. Yeah. About how long was it to suit up each cast member? Uh, like to dress them yes. in the morning? Like each day, how long would it take to dress the most difficult member? We, I mean, Spartans, we started with an, an hour at hmm. the very beginning, you know, to put it an, an hour and there were about two to three cost, costumes on set. This is the very beginning. Took, we took an hour uh, time slot from the, for, for the 80s. How long do you need tomorrow? So we started with an hour and then we ended up with like, uh, like slightly more, more than a half an hour around 30 minutes, you know, along the way to dress them like and the suit and the suit together and with the two, with the two helps. So from three for an hour down to two people for a bit more than half an hour, you know, it's muscle suit and, and the suit and then the suit. So they become pretty quick. Yeah. Practice. Practice. Yeah. Practice. But also the third person helping was the, the actor. Mm -hmm. It was it when you exactly or the actress and knew yeah. the process was go first. So facilitate was actually the third person to helping, but the other one knew exactly the mm -hmm. choreography, no joking mm -hmm. with it, and the what comes first and what. And so there were like def different layers of it. So they were helping big time also mm -hmm. for themselves. Less time getting dressed, mm -hmm. sleeping a bit more. Armor. <laughs> yeah, they would have come. They would have come with your armor to sleep a bit, a bit more. <laughs> they yeah, would wear a home. half hour to get coffee. <laughs> Heck, right on. <laughs> yeah. And they were sitting. On, I said the last time in this big chairs, like a big swimming pool chair. Mm -hmm. Something that can only be found in the United States. I've never seen anything <laughs> with that. I, I have a picture on my Instagram sitting on those chairs and look like mm -hmm. a, I don't know, a miniature. Yeah, the small children in the giant mm -hmm. chair. <laughs> what is it? I've never seen those the things. But now very I gotta look strong. it up very strong for heavy weight thing. Yeah. So they had their chairs, you know. I know last time we spoke as well, you said that some of the fabrics, um, you weren't able to find what you want, so you had to have them made. That disappoints all of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say that, um, one of the first questions was how are we going to do the UNSC thing? So I, f I felt there were no need of a texture there, meaning we don't need to know actually the camera. Uh, it does need to detect the texture of it. Better if it's something that we I start thinking it should be, whether we have, you know, rich, the planet rich, which is the most, mm -hmm. you know, um, sci-fi world down to the magical, when you actually can count the threads of the mm -hmm. cozy material, you know, going on the range of that, going through the pirates world and everything. So how do we do the UNSC? So I started looking into Jersey material or uh, microfiber thing. Don't all these exist, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, to make the, those uniform not looking like wool or anything, like something that you don't mm. know, you don't know. Yeah. Because you don't really read the, you know, if it's microfiber thing, you don't read the texture. Mm -hmm. which is possibly what, you know, if it's, if it's the most uh, updated world, they might use mm -hmm. some material, which is not necessarily fabric. That was the idea behind it. But then come talking about what we use is like a lycra of microfiber material, which I found it. What I was possibly referring is that uh, in looking for textures, for example, my key, I, I wasn't able to find the texture I was needed on that specific material. So with the three printer and the person I had at work, we started building um, a texture. You know, it can be like a jelly material or some little prints and stuff to make 
that shape less of like ancient Egyptian just mm -hmm. to make it like a modern uh, Egyptian uh, style thing. So we start building textures, but the, the we, we never really woven fabric with that. The fabric exists. I just worked on it to make it less of recognizable. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to make it less of, you know, nowadays. Yeah. Well, you're, you're 500 years in the future. We're probably not using the same textures and, and fabrics and as, you know, we are now. So it was a, a good design choice to kind of make it more, mod, more modern to that time period. Somehow, yeah. Yeah. And... Um, for another thing for Dr. Halsey, um, we did a prototype. I was looking at, you know, iconic image and I said, how am I gonna do this? So I did a prototype of many in leather, which it could be a possibility. But somehow, and I understand why that didn't go through, it was almost like, let's experience something different than that. Mm -hmm. Although you didn't see it was leather. Because, you know, to be like the color together, they're very. Um, uh, you don't understand what it is. It was not, you know, uh, so understandable. There was going to be that material. So then I found some lighter version of uh, microfiber material. Then then I could dye. Mm -hmm. and the colors needed, and they were really soft. And 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 so by doubling with then cotton, then you know there was a lot of stitching at that that level. Then all of a sudden they got really happy. And but I need to dig through and then die and see you know what would be the feeling of whatever i was reading of the image did, but I did you take notes of, on that like as you go do you take notes because you're 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 kind of experimenting as you go along to get where you need to and do you take do you in your process take notes so you can remember how you got to that point um like because you obviously had to play around with it a bit to get to, to exactly the way you wanted it and then now you have to recreate it to make more than one so, you, so do you take notes to keep that uniformity? In in a way we do, not scientifically, but let's say the assistant cost a designer that I work with normally times and she would take notes of really every, every, everything. But what um and then the in the dyeing department or in the 3D department or in the uh, you know concept artists, they all take notes of the coloring or the you know aging they do. And mostly, since it's very hard to do the same shades of thing, mm -hmm. if I need to do one thing, I'm, I make sure it dyes a lot more material. We make it of that color because it's really hard to find the same shades back again. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So we take notes, but also we hope we're going to get away with uh, thinking ahead. But yes, mm -hmm. we need to have notes of how we get there because it's going to be hard to do it again. Mm -hmm. A season later, or God knows when. <laughs> Like, oh no, what did I do last year, last like four years ago? We do it again. Jesus, what was I thinking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have to make 30 of these. How do we get the exact same dye yeah. color? Yeah, and it needs to be pretty continuity. Yeah. 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 yeah, we need to have some notes of that. So so when you're adding pieces to a, a bodysuit, like you're keeping your, your range of motion areas free. How do you distribute the weight that you're adding to that without getting like sagging and and other like problems where you, you know, you put so much weight on a, on a light material that eventually you're going to have distortion. That's a good question. First of all, the, the I'd say the Lycra or whatever jersey you're using, it's be a thick one. Because mm -hmm. any, if it's like the, the ones, you, you know, the very thin ones are always going to be signed in somewhere. Yeah. So it should be a very thick material or simply doubled. Mm -hmm. But you still have an elastic material, but it's a lot, a lot stronger. So it has a structure. Yeah, not going to really give out, <laughs> giving out their strength because of the weight. Then obviously anything you're gonna you're gonna put on it should be the the lighter possible, mm -hmm. even if it looks <laughs> a bit too light foam yeah. anything. Because then you're gonna add up later on. Mm -hmm. So if you stitch on foam, any material can be like fake leather or whatever you like. As long as it's the, between the heavy and the and the, you know the light one, go for the lightest mm -hmm. lightest because at the end mm -hmm. it's gonna be a bit of weight anyway. Yeah, and add up. So the lightest material and on the and on the elastic base, but like very thick, you know, lycra or doubled, if the people buy it and that makes a, mm -hmm. and then you stitch it on it or you glue. Sometimes is good, but sometimes it makes it very stiff. Mm -hmm. So a combination of the two, but stitching on something, you'd be surprised at how it actually stays on. 
So as yeah. long as it's pulled up, you know, braces to pull, uh, these things would fall, falling down all the time. So they're like very, you know, elastic braces to keep the, you know, the, the bottom part. The structure, you know, yeah. 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 Well, guys, I actually have to go to work. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, we are also hitting the two-hour mark, which we yeah. said that we'd uh, let Geo escape at. <laughs> so, uh, is there any last little tidbits that you'd like to share with the folks of the 405th and your fans out there? Um, I'm not sure at this moment, but I, I really, um, I really appreciated the, the production of Halo. Not even during the production but also afterwards with you guys because you make me go back to very challenging memory that now I can see with the distance and mm -hmm. laugh about it and it's almost like I have nobody to share with because it's been a, such a, an important um, uh, production and experience that I'm pretty sure it will last as one of the most important ones for several reasons um, that going back it's something that I do appreciate doing it and it's especially with you talking to you about it and um, this is one thing I, I'm happy about it, and I had the chance twice to, to go through that memory. Mm -hmm. So um, you can write me, and I'll have an answer for you, especially for you, anytime, anything. <laughs> well, thank you. We thank tried you so to get much. to everyone's questions, but I'm sure there's always going to be more that the community has. Mm -hmm. so. Write me, and I answer back. Yeah. We'll do this for and yeah. We have your Twitter and your Instagram so mm -hmm. that everyone can find you online. So please. Uh, if there's please. anywhere else that you'd like to tell people to see your work, please do. Mostly, I mostly do Instagram, just okay. a big focus on one. But uh, thank you very much. Thank you. So thank you for sharing all your knowledge and experience. It's, it's, it's always fun to see the other side of a show to actually appreciate the production and the effort that goes into the presentation. Thank you. I appreciate that too. So you're going to work somewhere, yeah? Yes, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I had a meeting for eight minutes ago and I was like, I'll be there soon. <laughs> okay. I'm doing something. All right. All right. Please do. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Hey. Thanks have for a good event. morning. Thank you for your time. Have a good afternoon. Yeah, have a lovely evening. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, yeah. Alessio. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Have a good one, everyone. Bye. Ciao. Thank you, everyone.